Hello there, it's Mike with the Fish Tank Barn, and I'd like to welcome you back to another video. We just recently had our local fish club auction, which means quite a few changes here in the fish barn. We've seen some fish go, and we've seen some fish come back into the barn. I've also sold quite a few plants, so I have some pretty bare tanks right now that need to get replanted. So come along with me here as we set up some new tanks. We also have to set up a fry tank for a fish that we purchased a couple months ago that's starting to get pretty gravid. So let's go ahead and get started. The first tank we're going to start off with here is going to be one of the simpler projects, and that's this tank with the Philippine Blue Angels. Obviously, you can see this tank is very Spartan, with just some sand and a little bit of leftover valisneria. So the solution to this tank is actually going to be very simple. And since this might be a breeding pair of fish, I'm going to go ahead and put a flower pot in here and see if we can get some spawning activity on the flower pot. I'm going to stick that right in the corner. To make this very easy, I'm just going to go ahead and place this big pot of crypts in the other corner so that the fish can have a little bit of cover. So I definitely think this will make the tank look a little bit nicer, have some plants in here. Um, hopefully the crypts will spread out from the pot, um, populate other parts of the tank as well. And then the angelfish can go ahead and spawn on the pot. So obviously I've kind of spooked them with moving everything around in here. We'll go ahead and check back in with this tank and see how the fish are doing once they've kind of stopped being spooked and have settled in a little bit more with their new environment. So I came back to film this tank a couple days later, and as you can see, the angelfish seem to like the cover of the flower pot. I will continue to monitor this tank, and at some point, maybe we'll find some angelfish eggs. So the next tank we need to work on here is my 20 gallon tank with my two pair of Aphia Simeon Citra Pinnis. The person I bought these fish from told me they generally spawn around Christmas and New Year's time, but since we're getting close to Thanksgiving, I think it's about time we set up this tank to enable these fish to spawn. I was thinking about doing spawning mops for these fish, but I did speak to the gentleman I purchased them from, and he basically said that they'll spawn in the tank without any sort of extra intervention. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some guppy grass to the top of this tank, and hopefully those fish will spawn right in the guppy grass. So pretty soon, hopefully in the next three months or so, we'll see some fry in here, and we can knock off a killifish species that we bred here in the fish barn. So definitely something I'm pretty excited for. So our next project's gonna revolve around these Brachyraphis Russ with a. I purchased these fish back in September from a local swap. The person I purchased these from told me it was a very good idea to separate the females because they're rabid fry eaters. Through the fish club, I recently purchased a bunch of two and a half gallon and five gallon tanks. So let's go ahead and grab one of the two and a half gallon tanks and set up a little fry system to see if we can get this female to drop her fry. All right, so now we have our two and a half gallon tank here. Uh, this is gonna be our little fry tank. So let's go ahead and start setting this up. So what I wanna make sure to do here is have places for the fry to hide on both the top and bottom. So I really don't know a lot about this species for where the fry go once they've been released from the female. So I'm really gonna wanna make sure I provide cover on both the top and bottom of the tank. So what I'm gonna start out with doing is having some java moss. Um, I got this from another tank that I have here in the fish room. And I'm gonna put that all over the bottom here. And then just to hold it down, I am gonna put a little rock in there. And then I'm just gonna add some water to it. Now I'm not using new water for this, I'm just using water that's already from another tank here in the fish room. So now that we have our water in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add some guppy grass to the top as well. You can see that there's quite a bit of cover in here, so the fry have a good place to hide once they're born, so hopefully the, the females won't be able to eat them. So the last thing I'm gonna add is an air stone. So I'm not gonna turn it on right at the moment just to eliminate some of the noise here in the fish room, but I'm gonna place it in here. 
So I went ahead and put the largest of the two females in this tank. So hopefully shortly she'll drop some fry in here and we can go ahead and pull her out and put her back into the main tank again and work on raising the fry. So at some point here in the near future, I'm gonna have to go ahead and work on making some sort of fry rack. So I really do wanna make it a goal to breed some more fish here in the fish room. Uh, there are a couple of good aid species that I've really struggled with spawning. So I think I really need to start pulling some females and putting them into a tank like this. So hopefully we'll get some fry from this fish in the near future. And uh, this can be kind of a test case for this system and see how well it works. Stay tuned to future videos because I'll go ahead and keep you posted on how this works out. So let's head on to this next project, which is this 37 gallon cube. This tank used to have a lot of Alicinari in it to the point where it was actually overrun. So for the auction this year, I decided to clean this tank out entirely of its Valisneria and go ahead and sell the Valisneria at the auction. I decided to replace the Valisneria with the crypts that I bought from the auction. So I'm going to go ahead and start getting those and start getting this tank planted. So I do think we have a pretty good start here to a nice little crypt garden. Um, the crypts are kind of small right now, but I do think we have a lot of fertilizer sitting in the substrate. So I definitely think there's a good base here for these crypts to take off and grow. So we'll go ahead and see how these do here in the next few months. And maybe we'll do a little update on this tank once everything gets settled in. One of the decisions I made going into the auction is I decided to part ways with my colony of Lamprologus ocelotus gold. They were really beautiful fish, but I really just wanted to focus more on live bears. So as a result of that decision, I'm left here with this empty tank. I have a group of live bears coming in tomorrow that I need to put in this tank. So I need to go ahead and get this tank planted and rescaped to accommodate the new fish that I have coming. Unfortunately, I won't be able to film planning and setting up this tank since I would just be in the way of the camera, but I'll go ahead and cut back to this tank once I'm all done. So here's what the tank ended up looking like. I went ahead and added a coral rock that I had lying around here just to help buffer the water and add a little bit of rock work to the tank. I also added some more crypts that we had from the auction, so hopefully at some point they'll spread out and we'll have a nice little crypt garden in here. So I'm looking forward to getting the new fish tomorrow. Uh, hopefully they enjoy the new home. But stay tuned next week and we'll talk a little bit more about that fish and another fish I have coming as well that I'm pretty excited about. So the next tank I want to do some work on here is this tank with the Cyprochromus. This tank used to have a lot of hornwort and duckweed, but I've since removed most of that. And I've had a few algae problems just because of the lack of plant cover in this tank. So we're gonna plant some crypts in here to try to remedy that. So the one thing you will notice is this tank is kind of high and kind of hard to really get your hands into to plant. So I've got a solution for that that we're gonna go ahead and work on upstairs. So let me go ahead here and show you what we're gonna do. Obviously, first of all, we do have our crypts here. Uh, these crypts actually I picked up from a local club meeting the gentleman that I purchased them from packages them real nice here in this little plastic container, which I think is quite nice. Uh, they've been sitting in a tank here for about a month or so, just kind of getting ready for me to use them, and they've done just fine. Um, also here, I do have the Aquarium Co-op Easy Planters. I really do like using these, especially when planting in sandy substrates. You can go ahead and plant them in these, and they do a really nice job. So I have this gravel here as well. I'm just going to use this to weigh the plants down, so when I put them in the tank, they don't float back up. I do have these two pieces of foam here as well. Uh, this is pretty porous foam, so the plant's roots will go right through this, no problem. And I'm just gonna use this to keep the plants from falling through the bottom. So first of all, what we're gonna do here is you're gonna take your planter, you can see the hole. We're just gonna take your piece of foam, shove it in the hole, kind of give it a little bit of a, a base to rest on. And we'll do it with the other one. So I'm just gonna break this crypt up into about, you know, maybe like four plants or so maybe two on each side. So I've kind of got the crypts now split up into about three groups or so. So I'm gonna take this first group and just kind of stick the roots into the planter. You know, and then grab some gravel, kind of stick it on top. Just to give it some weight to it. So basically make a little pot out of it. And then we're gonna kind of do that with the next the next bunch as well. All 
All right, so I'm going to add some easy root tabs in here as well from the aquarium co-op. I should have done this in the beginning. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of forgot about them. But uh, we'll go ahead and we can just stick a, take one of the pills here and just kind of stick it in where necessary and it'll be just fine. So, there you go. So we're going to take those downstairs now and uh, hopefully plant those in the tank and uh, we should be good to go. All right, so we're back at the tank now. Uh, we do have our planted little pot here. And we're just gonna go ahead and put this in very carefully. I'm gonna have to get up on a ladder to do this just so I can reach. But I'm gonna carefully, I'm gonna carefully put this in. I'm gonna adjust it just a bit. My short arms don't get in there, so we're just gonna take a little stick here, kind of adjust it towards the back. Then we're gonna do the other one, very much the same way. So there we go. Uh, I've got the crypts planted in here now. So hopefully at some point here, you know, these crypts will spread out, grow onto the sand a little bit more, and you know, kind of create a nice little crypt garden in here, and kind of combat some of the algae that was going on in here. Uh, give something to compete with the duckweed. Uh, I know crypts do grow kind of slow, so they're not the best plants to do that, but. Definitely needed some more plant life in here though. So really happy with how it turned out so far and uh, we'll see how it goes. I hope you really enjoyed coming along with me and completing all of these projects today. I'm really happy with how the tanks turned out. I'll go ahead and keep you updated on how the fry project turns out as well. So hopefully we'll have some fry here in the very near future. So with that being said, stay safe, stay fishy, and I'll catch you on the next video.